Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, I've actually been serving on this committee of the Bank for International Settlements looking at what the costs of the new regulations will be. And the assumption, actually, that the committee is making is exactly the assumption that you outlined, that the consumers of banks uh, will bear extra costs because of the additional equity capital. The assumption that the Bank for International Settlements is making is that banks, after the higher equity capital requirements are, have come into force, that um, the banks will continue to require the same return on equity as they did before, and the only way they're going to get that additional return on equity, or, or, or that additional profit that will keep the return on equity the same, because obviously if equity has gone up, profits have got to go up. The only way they'll get that higher profit level is by increasing spreads on consumer transactions. So for example, loans will be a few basis points more expensive, derivative transactions will be a few basis points more expensive, and that sort of thing. So yeah, I think that we, you know, we can expect that to be one of the costs of the new regulations. And of course, what the regulators would argue is, yes, there are these costs, but the benefits far outweigh the costs, because the benefits are making a major default by um, a large bank much, much less likely. And that's a big benefit to consumers. I think it might be a sign of things to come. I think uh, the increased um, collateral requirements for derivatives are making derivatives. I mean, ultimately, the uh, size of the derivative market is, is driven by end users. Although, you know, an end user does a transaction, and that leads to a lot of other transactions in derivative markets. But if, if end users stop using derivatives, then um, the, the derivatives markets will contract. and. Uh, I think uh, derivatives are going to become more expensive for end users because of the additional collateral requirements that, um, that there will be within the system, both for derivatives that are cleared centrally, that's cleared through central clearing parties, and derivatives that are cleared uh, bilaterally, because new regulations are going to require additional capital requirements, um, uh, sorry, additional collateral requirements for, for derivatives that are cleared um, bilaterally, as well as those that are cleared centrally. Well, the big danger, of course, is that a CCP could fail. And so, you know, what have we achieved by creating these uh, huge CCPs like LCH ClearNet and the subsidiary of the CME group that's a CCP and so on? What have we achieved by creating these huge uh, CCPs, we've, you could argue that we used to have these banks which were too big to fail, and now we're creating CCPs that are too big to fail, and so we swap one problem for another. I don't think it's really quite like that because banks are incredibly complicated organizations. You know, have you ever tried understanding what a bank is really doing from its financial statements? It's almost impossible. Bank financial statements are very opaque. Because, because you know what banks do and how they account for it is, is is incredibly complicated. CCPs, by contrast, are pretty simple organizations. So I think CCPs are actually a lot easier to regulate than banks because it's a lot easier to see what CCPs are actually doing, whether they're taking in enough, enough initial margin, what the quality of the members of the CCP is, and that sort of thing. So I'm not. I'm not really pessimistic on that front, but there is, but, this, but I would certainly acknowledge that there is the argument that we've swapped one too big to fail problem for another too big to fail problem. <laughs>